Good morning. I'm Lee Jamison, and this is the 36th installment of the Bible in a Year. Today we'll be reading from Exodus 36 through 38 and the conclusion of John, John 21. Chapter 36 Moses is speaking. Bezalel and Aholiab, and every craftsman in whom the Lord has put skill and intelligence to know how to do any work in the construction of the sanctuary, shall work in accordance with all that the Lord has commanded. And Moses called Bezalel and Aholiab, and every craftsman in whose mind the Lord had put skill, everyone whose heart stirred him up to come to do the work. And they received from Moses all the contribution that the people of Israel had brought for doing the work on the sanctuary. They still kept bringing him free will offerings every morning, so that all the craftsmen who were doing every sort of task in the sanctuary came, each from the task that he was doing, and said to Moses, The people bring much more than enough for doing the work that the Lord has commanded us to do. So Moses gave command, and word was proclaimed through the camp. Let no man or woman do anything more for the contribution for the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing, for the material they had was sufficient to do all the work and more. And all the craftsmen among the workmen made the tabernacle with ten curtains. They were made of fine twined linen and blue and purple and scarlet yarns, with cherubim skillfully worked. The length of each curtain was twenty-eight cubits, and the breadth of each curtain four cubits. All the curtains were the same size. He coupled five curtains to one another, and the other five curtains he coupled to one another. He made loops of blue on the edge of the outermost curtain of the first set. Likewise, he made them on the edge of the outermost curtain of the second set. He made fifty loops on the one curtain, and he made fifty loops on the edge of the curtain that was in the second set. The loops were opposite one another, and he made fifty clasps of gold, and coupled the curtains one to the other with clasps. So the tabernacle was a single whole. He also made curtains of goat's hair for a tent over the tabernacle. He made eleven curtains. The length of each curtain was thirty cubits, and the breadth of each curtain four cubits. The eleven curtains were the same size, he coupled five curtains by themselves and six curtains by themselves, and he made fifty loops on the edge of the outermost curtain of the one set, and fifty loops on the edge of the other connecting curtain, and he made fifty clasps of bronze to couple the tent together that it might be a single whole, and he made for the tent a covering of tanned ram skins and goat skins. Then he made the upright frames for the tabernacle of acacia wood. Ten cubits was the length of a frame, and a cubit and a half the breadth of each frame. Each frame had two tenons for fitting together. He did this for all the frames of the tabernacle. The frames for the tabernacle he made thus, twenty frames for the south side, and he made forty bases of silver under the twenty frames, two bases under one frame for its two tenons, two bases under one frame for its two tenons, and two bases under the next frame for its two tenons. For the second side of the tabernacle, on the north side, he made twenty frames, and there forty bases of silver two bases under one frame, and two bases under the next frame. For the rear of the tabernacle westward, he made six frames. 
He made two frames for corners of the tabernacle in the rear. And they were separate beneath, but joined at the top, at the first ring. He made two of them this way for the two corners. There were eight frames with their bases of silver, 16 bases, under every frame, two bases. He made bars of acacia wood, five for the frames of the one side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the frames of the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the frames of the tabernacle at the rear westward. And he made the middle bar to run from end to end halfway up the frames. And he overlaid the frames with gold and made their rings of gold for holders for the bars and overlaid the bars with gold. He made the veil of blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twined linen with cherubim skillfully worked into it he made it and for it he made four pillars of acacia and overlaid them with gold their hooks were of gold and he cast for them four bases of silver he also made a screen for the entrance of the tent of blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twined linen embroidered with needlework and its five pillars with their hooks he overlaid their capitals and their fillets were of gold but their five bases were of bronze bezalel made the ark of acacia wood two cubits and a half was its length a cubit and a half its breadth and a cubit and a half its height and he overlaid it with pure gold inside and outside and made a molding of gold around it and he cast for it four rings of gold for its four feet two rings on its one side and two rings on its other side and he made poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold and put the poles into the rings on the sides of the ark to carry the ark and he made a mercy seat of pure gold two cubits and a half was its length and a cubit and a half its breadth and he made two cherubim of gold he made them of hammered work on the two ends of the mercy seat one cherub on the one end and one cherub on the other end of the piece with the mercy seat he made the cherubim on its two ends the cherubim spread out their wings above overshadowing the mercy seat with their wings with their faces one to another toward the mercy seat were the faces of the cherubim making the table he also made the table of acacia wood two cubits was its length a cubit its breadth and a cubit and a half its height and he overlaid it with pure gold and made a molding of gold around it and he made a rim around it a hand breadth wide and he made a molding of gold around the rim he cast for it four rings of gold and fastened the rings to the four corners at its four legs close to the frames were the rings as holders for the poles to carry the table he made the poles of acacia wood to carry the table and overlaid them with gold and he made the vessels of pure gold that were to be on the table its plates and dishes for incense and its bowls and flagons with which to pour drink offerings making the lampstand he also made the lampstand of pure gold he made the lampstand of hammered work its base on its stem, its cups and its calyxes, and its flowers were of one piece with it. And there were six branches going out of its sides, three branches of the lampstand out of one side of it, and three branches of the lampstand out of the other side of it. Three cups made like almond blossoms, each with calyx and flower on the one branch, and three cups 
made like almond blossoms, each with calyx and flower on the other branch. So for the six branches going out of the lampstand. And on the lampstand itself were four cups, made like almond blossoms, with their calyxes and flowers. And a calyx of one piece, with it under each pair of the six branches going out of it. Their calyxes and their branches were of one piece with it. The whole of it was a single piece, hammered work of pure gold. And he made its seven lamps and its tongs and its trays of pure gold. He made it and all its utensils out of a talent of pure gold, making the altar of incense. He made the altar of incense of acacia wood. Its length was a cubit, and its breadth was a cubit. It was square, and two cubits was its height. Its horns were of one piece with it. He overlaid it with pure gold, its top and around its sides and its horns, and he made a molding of gold around it and made two rings of gold on it, under its molding, on two opposite sides of it, as holders for the poles with which to carry it. And he made the poles of acacia wood, and overlaid them with gold. He made the holy anointing oil also, and the pure fragrant incense, blended as by a perfumer. Making the Altar of Burnt Offering Chapter 38 He made the altar of burnt offering of acacia wood. Five cubits was its length, and five cubits its breadth. It was square, and three cubits was its height. He made horns for it on its four corners. Its horns were of one piece with it, and he overlaid it with bronze, and he made all the utensils of the altar, the pots, the shovels, the basins, and the forks, and the fire pans. He made all its utensils of bronze, and he made for the altar a grating, a network of bronze under its ledge, extending halfway down. He cast four rings on the four corners of the bronze grating as holders for the poles. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with bronze. And he put the poles through the rings on the sides of the altar to carry it with them. He made it hollow with boards. Making the bronze basin. He made the basin of bronze and its stand of bronze from the mirrors of the ministering women who ministered in the entrance of the tent of meeting. Making the court. And he made the court. For the south side, the hangings of the court were of fine twined linen, a hundred cubits. Their twenty pillars and their twenty bases were of bronze, but the hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. And, for the north side, there were hangings of a hundred cubits, their twenty pillars, their twenty bases, were of bronze, but the hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. And for the west side were hangings of fifty cubits, their ten pillars and their ten bases, the hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. And for the front to the east, Fifty cubits. The hangings for the one side of the gate were fifteen cubits, with their three pillars and three bases, and so for the other side. On both sides of the gate of the court were hangings of fifteen cubits, with their three pillars and their three bases. All the hangings around the court were of fine twined linen. And the bases for the pillars were of bronze, but the hooks of the pillars and their fillets were of silver. The overlaying of their capitals was also of silver, and all the pillars of the court 
were filleted with silver. And the screen for the gate of the court was embroidered with needlework in blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twined linen. It was twenty cubits long and five cubits high in its breadth, corresponding to the hangings of the court, and their pillars were four in number. Their four bases were of bronze, their hooks of silver, and the overlaying of their capitals and their fillets of silver. And all the pegs for the tabernacle and for the court all around were of bronze. Materials for the tabernacle. These are the records of the tabernacle. The tabernacle of the testimony, as they were recorded at the commandment of Moses, the responsibility of the Levites under the direction of Ithamar, the son of Aaron, the priest, Bezalel, the son of Uri, son of Hur, and of the tribe of Judah, made all that the Lord commanded Moses. And with him was Oholiab, the son of Asimach, of the tribe of Dan, an engraver and designer and embroiderer in blue and purple and scarlet yarns and fine twined linen. All the gold that was used for the work. In all the construction of the sanctuary, the gold from the offering was 29 talents and 730 shekels by the shekel of the sanctuary. The silver from those of the congregation who were recorded was a hundred talents and 1,775 shekels by the shekel of the sanctuary. A baker a head, that is half a shekel by the shekel of the sanctuary, for everyone who was listed in the records from 20 years old and upward for 603, 500, Fifty men, the hundred talents of silver, the hundred talents of silver were for casting the bases of the sanctuary, and the bases of the veil. A hundred bases for the hundred talents, and a talent a base. And of the one thousand seven hundred seventy-five shekels, he made hooks for the pillars, and overlaid their capitals and made fillets for them. The bronze that was offered was seventy talents and two thousand four hundred shekels. With it he made the bases for the entrance of the tent of meeting, the bronze altar, and the bronze grating for it, and all the utensils of the altar, their bases around the court, and the bases of the gate of the court, all the pegs of the tabernacle, and all the pegs around the court. And that concludes the reading in Exodus. And now, the conclusion of the Gospel of John, chapter 21. Jesus appears to seven disciples. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called a twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and the two other of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and they got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, do you have any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it. And now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. When they got on land, they saw a charcoal fire in place, with fish laid out on it, and bread. 
Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dare ask, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Jesus and Peter. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to them, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This, he said, to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said, follow me. Jesus and the Beloved Apostle Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them, the one who had been reclining at table close to him, and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. So the saying spread among the brothers that this disciple was not to die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he was not to die, but if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who is bearing witness about these things, and who has written these things, and we know that his testimony is true. Now, there are also many other things that Jesus did. Were every one of them to be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. And that, and that concludes the Gospel of John. Thank you for following along with these readings. Uh, this is my fifth time through the Bible in a year, and I know this is a challenging uh, discipline to keep up day after day. Please like and subscribe to these readings so you can receive notifications of each new post and feel free to comment below to make suggestions uh, to make these readings better. I do hold comments back uh, for editorial purposes, but we'll post those that are relevant. Thank you very much. I'm Lee Jameson. Have a blessed day.